overall sweeping gameplay review for uh, my buddy, Deshaun. Hey, how you doing, man? <clears throat> so we are going to jump in with my highest level character, which is going to be Zane, my main. And uh, this is him right here. Hey, what's up, Zane? What up, word? Uh, I'm going to try and go back to the beginning levels where I can find people to fight without gaining any level because I'm still uh, playing with uh, my wife and I'm trying not to level up ahead of her. We're, we've gone through the entire campaign together and we're right near the end. So we'll start here and then I have uh, I have a Flak, a Beastmaster, and I have uh, an Amara for, for the Siren. So we'll be going through uh, a bit of all those and I'll probably end up finishing with her and just doing some gameplay as well. Hi. Without further ado, let's get it started. Alright, so this is too far down the game. We're going to need to fast travel back. Oh yeah. Finding all of my faithful fans. I'm also getting shit pins from my wife. <laughs> Alright, load, load, load. Nothing but waiting. Uh now the tip is talking about Dr. Zed's med vending machines and no Dr. Zed in this game, though. It's a bit of a bummer. It was fun. It's a great time. All right. So we're going to immediately flee. And get the fuck out of here. Uh, the droughts. Coming up past. Yeah, let's go with Ascension Bluff. We'll fight, uh, fight our way through the mouthpiece. I'll wander around here. Probably have some shit to find as well. This will be a good opportunity to fight a bit. Use some of my skills, action skills, boss fight. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But we got to get through the massive load screen first. I don't have a PC. It's not fast. <clears throat> let's see here uh, oh I just did it uh, right now to get here but uh, one of the most interesting things about this game is now you don't have to be at a fast travel station to fast travel anywhere you just fucking go let's uh let's see here let's turn some of this audio down some audio issues sound Crank that down a bit so everyone can actually hear me. I checked in on uh, when I was playing Tekken last night, and I, I went to go watch the footage afterwards. And I was trying to talk, and everyone was fighting way too fucking loud, couldn't even hear me. All right. So, uh, like I said, you can go into the menu here, and uh, for your map. One of the cool things about the map is now it is 3D, so you can see depth. It's kind of like the Doom map was that way too. Uh, you can select fast travel points within the map, uh, and also you can go straight to Sanctuary. Uh, if you pull out, you go to the actual planet and galaxy maps. And that'll let you see all the different planets you've been, Go to Pandora. And these are all the different areas on Pandora that you can fast travel to. Also, you can move the map around. Check out the back of Pandora. And boom, there it is. The Iridian Scar got huge. 
So anyway, that's a uh, that's the map. Uh, back here in the menu, we'll we'll talk about the menu real quick too. <clears throat> so you have your all of your progress and your log for all of your different quests and missions. Uh, they're separated out by main mission and then all your side missions separately. So that's pretty cool. It's very easy to find and go around through. You can also see all echo logs that you've ever found. Uh, so if they're you know lying around and you pick it up in someone's backstory, it stays and you can you can listen to them over again. Uh, there's a, a a challenge in every area where there's three Typhon logs and it's uh, they're the uh, audio diary of Typhon de Leon, who is the first Vault Hunter. Uh, so that's pretty fun. It's telling like a, a long, long arcing story about you know, how he started. Jesus, cat. <laughs> how he started out becoming a Vault Hunter. Uh, and then Iridian Writings is something that we haven't discovered yet. It's, this is, we think it's end game stuff after you beat everything. Uh, the map, like I said, shows you everything in 3D, also where you haven't been. It's not just blank, it does show you where the, where the stuff is. Inventory is pretty cool. Um, everything's sorted out here. They have a, an item score. Uh, next to the manufacturer name, it says 410 for this one. Uh, that's basically how well the gun performs for your character build right now. It's kind of ranked. And then, so you can sort them by score or you can sort them by type manufacturer. Uh, so <clears throat> all of the guns are over here. This is just your full backpack, class mods, shit like that. And then over on this side, these are your equipped equipment, guns and such. Um, you can inspect the guns. Check them out. Move them around. It's pretty sweet. You can also change your gun skin. So this is what the default skin is of the gun. This is what it looks like when you pick it up off the ground. Then you get different skins that you unlock for the guns. And uh, this is one that we love. It's called Butt Dazzle. It was from the uh, the pre-order. Uh, the Butt Stallion kit. So it's the Diamond Pony. And then, yeah, just a bunch of really cool color combinations. Uh, and you can unlock a ton. Let's see here. Oh, also, it, you can get really detailed information about your guns. Uh, by moving through this menu. It'll tell you the different uh, little blurbs about the manufacturer and then what it does, the actual stats of the gun and how it performs, and then the individual components. And it'll tell you if the components do anything, like this barrel accessory increases projectile speed. So in all the Borderlands games, they had... Uh, that's what makes the guns unique and why there can be so many different guns. You can't billion guns. There's not a, there's a billion gun combinations that can be made based upon changing the individual components. And that was that way in Borderlands 2 as well. But uh, this time, it actually tells you what they are. So you know that if it's got you know, a dull barrel, you get better fire rate or something like that. <clears throat> uh, they also have, off to the side here, Weapon trinkets. So these are the weapon trinkets we have unlocked so far. They're just, uh, they're much smaller than I was expecting them to be. I expected them to be kind of like, I don't know, like keychain sized. And they are definitely like earring sized. Here, this one's right there. There's my little piece size. Wiggle, wiggle. So yeah, I thought they would be like much bigger and hang off the gun but they're just kind of small but they do sit in your sight so it's fun to be able to look at them <clears throat> uh we'll do quick demos about the guns once we get into fighting but for now we'll keep moving through and talk about the new way the skills are set up uh so the all the characters have an action skill and then they have action skill augments that, that they can use as well uh, the action skills are, an are annotated by them being the little hexagon there. And then any of the augments are the little chevron. Uh, now when you... Let's see. Here's the tree I worked down. Uh, now when you pick a skill tree, uh, your skill tree that you move down has all of the, the skills and passive abilities that you can unlock. 
but the actual action skill itself, you can equip any of them that you have unlocked. So for example, I went down this tree that has the, uh, the digi clone, but I don't have to have the digi clone equipped. However, I have a bunch of uh, augments and uh, skills and perks unlocked in here that make the clone better. So I sh probably should have them equipped. Uh, one of the unique things about Zane as a character is he's the operative so his shtick is that he's all like tech based so he has uh, three different action skills everyone's got three three action skills that they can equip or main action skills and then based off of that but uh, for his three action skills that he can have he has one which is the digi clone where he deploys a clone of himself the clone fights with you kind of like how the turrets did for the commandos uh, except that you also have the ability to swap places with it, which is really fucking handy. Uh, <laughs> because you drop your clone and then you run around, and now a boss is coming at you, and this raging Goliath just jumps in the air, and it's right as it's about to land on you. You just click your button, and now your clone is there. And he takes all the damage, and you get to just be shooting him in the back. So the clone turns out to be a huge asset, because it's like a turret that has a personality. Uh, his second action skill is a deployable shield barrier. Uh, this was really cool. Actually, I used it a bunch. Uh, <clears throat> so you throw it out, and it's actually a really sizable wall. Uh, probably three people can fit very comfortably behind it. And it blocks all incoming projectiles. So that's grenades, rockets, bullets, uh spit from skags and the whole nine uh, and then when you or your allies shoot through it you get amp damage so you just deal a shit ton of damage while being completely blocked uh, it's a little harder to use in like a complete fray like when you're fighting in just like the mob all the way around you but if you're running into a room uh, it was really handy for us we were playing for a while i used it you would walk into a doorway and the room would be full of bad guys. You just drop the shield at the doorway and then the two of us just have this funnel of doing a shit ton of amp damage and not being able to get hit. So it was really handy for a bit. Once you start fighting a lot of people though, you throw it down and then immediately there's people behind you. So it kind of got useless. And then his third is uh, the Sentinel Drone. Uh, this is just a drone that he deploys, and it acts like a turret, except it flies around and fucks people up. And then uh, this is actually the second skill tree I'm working down now. One unique uh, piece to Zane, though, as the operative, is that he has the ability to sacrifice grenades to use a second action skill. So right now, I'm using two different action skills, which means I can't throw any grenades. So... I give up the ability to huck grenades into the fray. But instead, I get to deploy my clone and deploy my drone. So now, when we're uh, Cindy and I are playing, and uh, the two of us are you know, starting to get fucked up, all of a sudden, now it's four of us, because I've got a clone and a drone flying around. And uh, the, the drone's pretty fun, too. Uh, so you can equip... Uh, any two action skills. So for a while I had the clone and the shield. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, there's some really unique perks uh, that are pretty fun. Uh, and then the chevrons, like I said, they're the augments to the action skills. Uh, this one, for example, is whenever I swap places with a clone, uh, it both of us trigger a little cryo nova. So every time I swap, it, it throws... Uh, a little, little explosion around us. And uh, I would use that. I would run into the fray and then hit the clone and then it would just be a little bomb around me in the middle of a bunch of people. And I'm not there anymore. So that's really fucking handy. <clears throat> so the augments change how your action skill works and they will augment the action skill that's in this tree. So uh, for Zane, you get an action skill and two augments for both action skills. Uh, one really cool thing about how this worked though for Zane is I did give up throwing grenades. 
I can't use the right bumper to throw grenades anymore because my right bumper calls my drone. However, I am not grenade less because this skill tree, while you get rid of grenades, gives you the ability to use grenades without throwing grenades, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, for example, this one, uh, whenever my clone uh, is first activated, if he just throws a grenade for you. So now I'm throwing a grenade, but I don't have to be there. This one was really fun too. Uh, whenever you fire your gun, the first shot out of the magazine has a chance to have a grenade attached to it. So you just launch a grenade. And then also in the Sentinel tree, I just unlocked this ability where my drone drops grenades. So now I have a lot of grenades that are going about and I don't have to throw a single one of them. So I get two action skills and grenades are still in the field, which is really fucking handy. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's kind of how the action skills work. Uh, I'll run through a minute and, and fight and show guns and stuff. And then afterwards I will jump in real quick with the, uh, the beast master, show you how his thing is very unique too. So all of the characters in this game have really, really unique builds, and uh, they're all so far pretty fun to play with. Uh, Cindy's been playing as the gunner, Moe's, with her iron bear. Uh, that has been just a treat. That thing is a fucking beast. And uh, and I've, like I said, this has been my main, but I've got a siren and I've got a beastmaster, so I'll, I'll show you guys how, how that looks too. Uh, and then the last part of the menu is the Guardian rank, and uh, this is kind of like the Badass rank, except you don't get to use it until you beat the story. So once you beat the final mission, which is going to be, you know, killing the Calypso twins, whenever you do that, you unlock the ability to earn your Guardian rank. And so that's all endgame stuff. Now you're replaying, you're trying to go back and find all of the challenges, do all the side missions. Uh, that's when you're going to start building up the guardian ring. For now, I ain't got you. So I don't know how I don't know how well it works. Uh, let's see my load real quick. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, legendary drop rates uh, so far have been pretty similar to how Borderlands 2 was. It's there. It's not astounding, but it's not missing. So that's something. They this week has been their. Uh, it's the tenth anniversary of Borderlands. The first Borderlands came out in October of 2009. And so for the next five weeks, they're doing like special event weeks. And this first week was supposed to be bosses have an increased chance to drop. And apparently they're just still not dropping. So that's it's kind of frustrating. But this was actually a quest reward. So that's, uh, that's cool. Uh, legendary still work the same. Everything has uh, documented stats. But it also d probably does something that's not on the actual weapon card. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. I've got a Torg shotgun. Uh, Torg's uh, always going to be an explosive weapon. Shotguns, pistols, assault rifles. Um, however, they also have uh, a secondary firing mode that uses uh, sticky bullets instead of the little gyro jets. And when they stick, they do a little bit at more damage, so they're they do more damage, but they're like the the the, the sticky dart uh, pistols from uh, Borderlands 2. They do a lot of damage, but they're really hard to use because you have to tag someone. Uh, this has been my favorite gun so far. It's been so effective, which was finally, finally, finally got a gun that was worth a shit, especially this late in the game. Uh, but these are Atlas guns, and that's one of the new manufacturers for the Borderlands 3 game that weren't in Borderlands 2. Uh, the Atlas guns, uh, they have a secondary firing mode that when you uh, use it, it shoots a tracker of some sort. This one shoots darts, some of them shoot a grenade. Anything that gets tagged with the tracker, your bullets will, uh, they use smart bullet technology and they will always hit them. So you can point your gun up in the sky away and your bullets will curve right back to the, the target that you've tagged. So that's been really, really fucking handy because when you're getting your ass beat, you can just tag a bunch of people and then hide behind a wall and still keep fighting them while you're just waiting for your shields to come back. Uh, Hyperion, this was uh, just kind of a run-of-the-mill submachine gun. Uh, it just has a weapon shield. 
Uh, the Hyperion guns all have a weapon shield, so when you aim down the sights, it uh, pops up a little forward-facing shield. Uh, a lot of times, whenever it gets hit, it does special uh, abilities. Some of them do amp damage if you take if it gets hit. Some of them uh, make it to where uh, it, it's an absorb shield. You just collect the ammo from it. This is, uh, this is a COV gun, a COV's Children of the Vault. That's the bad guy, so this is what's replacing the bandit manufacturer of guns. Uh, the COV guns are unique in that they don't have a magazine. They just fire until your, your ammo reserve is empty, so you never have to reload. However, it does have a stat at the bottom that says shots to break. Uh, what that means is after a certain amount of shots, your gun breaks it overheats and you have to cool it down uh which all of the characters have a little squirt gun pistol that they s squirt some water onto it to cool it down so that's pretty fun this specific gun was a quest reward and it uh happened like 10 levels ago <laughs> and it has been super effective even this far um it was from doing this this like weird fucking quest uh, on the planet eden 6 which is like a swampy backwoods kind of place that's where the Jacobs manufacturer is with all the wood. Um, and he was like extreme chat. He wanted to do like extreme stunts and shit like that. And uh, you ended up like launching him to space. So the gun you got from it was this one. And it's a COV gun, so it never has a magazine. You just fire forever. Uh, but its special abilities are that it has 999 shots before it finally breaks. So that means you have to shoot 999 rounds it does say it consumes four ammo per shot per shot and then underneath it says lol no it doesn't uh, and that it shoots away the tears it actually does not consume any ammo so it's just like the infinity put your finger hard down and just don't stop shooting uh, only eventually after 999 shots you will have to cool it off and i've actually gotten there we were fighting uh one of the vault monsters and I just, right after i got this gun i was just like ah fuck just shooting 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 never let go and i was like yeah it's the infinite gun and then like once he'd stopped and had to cool it off and i was like oh i guess it wasn't infinity there's 999 so i shot over a thousand rounds in that boss fight <laughs> and it was still not enough wouldn't have been able to do it without cindy uh so the cov guns are pretty fun that way we also have Doll. Uh, Doll has different firing modes. Uh, so their secondary uh, firing mode actually switches its uh, fire rate. So this one switches between four shot burst and semi-auto. So Doll doesn't always just do burst shot. Uh, this one's full auto and three shot burst. There's other ones that are uh, semi-auto and full auto. <clears throat> so you can even end up with a Doll with no burst fire. TDR. These have been a an absolute riot. Uh, the TDR guns do the same just like they did in the other Borderlands games. You throw them instead of reloading them and then digistrict a new one. And uh, they explode doing damage based upon the ammo in the magazine. If you have more ammo in the magazine when you reload it, it does more damage. However, now all the TDR guns have different kind of thrown bonuses. This one, for example, says it bounces on impact. So you throw it, and it'll bounce, bounce, bounce until it hits someone. Uh, I may have another one yeah, here. Uh, this one also bounces. So, you know, really shaking it up there. Um, yeah, and that's going to be the last one I have. Fuck. Uh, some of them are sticky. When you throw them, they'll stick to a wall. Uh, or stick to the floor, and then they kind of act like a turret until they find someone, and then they'll run after and blow them up. Uh, some are homing. It's, it's all really cool shit. So the the TDR weapons change how they'll 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 actually blow up. So those have been great. Malawan weapons are they're uh, pretty cool in this game. They're a little hard to use though. In Borderlands Two, Borderlands I think Borderlands One as well malawan was all always elemental damage so if you had a malawan gun it did elemental damage uh since guns now have secondary firing modes in this game malawan weapons have always have two different uh elements for the elemental damage 
This one, for example, switches between radiation, which is the replacement for slag, and cryo. So if you use the secondary firing mode, now it can be cryo. So you get two elemental guns in one, which is really cool. Problem is they do take a long time to actually shoot. They have to like kind of charge up before they do, which kind of isn't really a problem with submachine guns. And with pistols, it's very short. But with shotguns, it feels like it's a really long time. And if you don't time it right to wait for it to fully charge, when you try and shoot it, you just let go of the trigger and nothing happens. So you can go like in, in the middle of a fight if you're panicking like we always are. Uh, you don't realize that you're not sh holding it down long enough. So they do a lot of damage, and it's always elemental, but the shotguns are really hard to use. So we end up going with uh, a, set, a different one. Uh, Jacobs. Jacobs uh, are still kind of the one shotgun, as it were. Uh, they do kind of stacking, increasing critical hit damage. The twist in this game now is that with the uh, critical hit, if you score a critical, the bullet ricochets from that enemy to the nearest one. So you can kind of bounce it around. Uh, that's its little you know, addition to what it normally does. <clears throat> Vladov always has a secondary firing mode that's uh, that's uh, like an actual secondary gun type type of thing. It's like an attachment. It's a true attachment uh, for the gun, whereas it's not changing a firing mode. It's changing to an attachment. This one has a secondary barrel that increases fire rate, so when you engage it, it turns it from being single fire to like the, the spinning double barrel. Uh, this one is an assault rifle, but underneath it is a shotgun that does a fuck ton of damage. So while you're shooting, you can just hit the down arrow switch to a shotgun now without having to switch weapons. So it's basically having an extra gun. I've also seen one one that was a blade off sniper rifle that had an under barrel rocket launcher. And I couldn't have asked for anything else that was more beautiful. Let's see, and I think that covers it for the gun manufacturers and their special abilities. Uh, grenades all kind of have the same thing. Every grenade has a different mod. Uh, they can also have kind of like, uh, you can see on this one, for example, it says Bounty Longbow, and it has its damage and its radiate, and then underneath, it says Longbow and Bounty. It can have all four of the slots full where it's longbow bouncy merv and homing or something or you know it can mix up uh it, well it wouldn't be longbow and homing but it can mix up with a lot of different perks uh this one just explodes which is a white grenade that just fucking explodes uh this one we never really figured out what it did because i don't throw grenades so i can't throw it uh but it's uh it was a quest reward and it's like a, a slice of cake and does something in the meantime i just found a regular grenade that is uh, sticky uh, and that's uh, if it sticks to someone it does more damage as well because i don't throw grenades i really don't kind of care what kind of grenade mod i is uh, i get i'm just kind of going for most damage output so this one actually had a lot more uh, the newest addition for the game here is that instead of having relics you have uh, artifacts, and those artifacts give you different stats, and they can be for a wide ver uh, variety of things. Uh, the, the most common ones I've seen so far either have to do with uh, buffing your slide uh, melee attack or your slam melee attack in some way or another. <clears throat> uh, this one uh, it adds... Uh, cryo damage to my slide attack so basically when you're running you can slide uh, and when you hit someone when you slide that's actually considered a melee attack and so now your slide does bonus melee damage as cryo and this one gives me 79% more speed so it's really almost you know nearly twice as fast uh, when you slide so that's how I move around now it's just I get the point A to point B pretty quickly Excuse me. So uh, now we've covered kind of that. Uh, shields, they, they also do the same thing as the grenades where they can have just, you know, different stats just kind of dropped in randomly. Uh, I just unlocked this 
the shield, I don't know what it does yet, so we'll see when I run into someone. But it looks like it has kind of like a, uh, almost like a Skyrim destruction spell flame cloak, but with radiation. So if anyone's near you, they take a lot of radiation damage. Uh, and you're immune to radiation itself. So radiation is like, a, like I said, they it was the replacement for slag uh, in a sense. They got rid of slag, so you don't you don't do slag anymore. Which was slag was really critical to like ultimate vault hunter mode and beyond and all the overpower levels because when an enemy was slagged, they would take up to three times more damage in those modes, two times normally. So you would be able to take down someone a lot easier. Uh, in this game, they don't have that. Uh, the radiation damage does just kind of act as an element, uh, except it's kind of uh, contagious in a sense. Like it's it's easier to spread. It's it's more likely to uh, to happen. And uh, when someone is irradiated and they're killed, they explode. And when they explode, they irradiate people all the way around them. So it you know you can pass that along. It's it's actually really handy. Cindy just ended up with a, a grenade as a quest reward called the Pipe Bomb. And uh, it's like a, it's a radiation grenade. It's like a playoff of like a sewer pipe. And uh, it's super overpowered. It's like a, it's like a Merv grenade, but it's all this like really stacking radiation damage. It just fucking melts anyone it hits. It's wild. Uh, and then class mods. Uh, the, the cool thing about the class mod situation here is now they actually show you what skills are getting improved rather than just listing them. Uh, and then they still do the bonus stats. So in Borderlands 2, when you would get a class mod, uh, here's, here's it, by the way, for Zane. It's a pair of binoculars. Uh, whenever you uh, got your class mod, the card would say the name of the class mod, and then it would tell you what its bonuses were and then it would list uh, s uh, skill increases but it would just list them so if you were trying to compare them you would have to either know all of them off the top of your head which was really hard because there were a lot or you would have to equip it go over to your skills see which ones are actually changed is it in the tree i'm in how much did it change go back equip the other one and go back and back this one uh, when you pull up the weapon card it'll actually tell you the skills so it shows you the the actual skill tile and it shows you the color so you know what skill tree it's in it'll also tell you what your stat is going to be when you use it so you can see that this one on the end says plus two and then seven out of five so it shows you the skill how much it's going to be increased by and what its total is going to be when you equip it so that's really handy because now you can just sit two side by side and get an easier comparison without having to jump back and forth. Especially since the menus have been a bit of an issue in this game so far. Really, uh, oh yeah, the slag thing. So they got rid of the slag. Uh, and they're kind of, uh, slag was really a Borderlands 2 thing and it was unique to its story. Uh, the whole Iridium playing into it was really heavy uh you still have iridium that you get in this game but it falls a lot more frequently in fact if i'm right down in the bottom right above my money i have 1400 iridium right now uh so one of the changes here as well is that the storage deck upgrades the seus you don't buy them with iridium from crazy earl you actually buy them with cash from marcus uh so you have to save up a lot of money to get those SDUs. And uh, and that means your Iridium is spent on other shit. And it's kind of like, uh, it's all cosmetic. Uh, as well as there's like one gun locker that you can buy from that has uh, uh, like different, they're, they're called like anointed uh, guns. And they give specific perks. And sometimes they're for specific characters with specific action skills uh they're they're crazy i have yet to use one because they seem kind of like they're very particular like it, it's one of those things where it's 
it's useful, but it's complicated. You have to know what you're doing to get it. And right now, we're still just kind of playing the game and getting used to it, uh, even as long as we've had it for a little less than a month. Uh, but it, it's still, you know, still a lot to get used to, and we haven't beaten the game yet. So, uh, but you can also buy skins rather than just waiting to find them on the floor. Uh, and you can buy weapon trinkets and weapon skins and different heads and stuff like that. So all the kind of customizable stuff that might be, you know, microtransaction-y in other games, uh, it's still kind of that way, except it's the Iridium that you find. And as you can see, it's not as if it's hard to come by. I have more Iridium right now in my pocket, and I haven't even beaten the game yet than I think I ever saw in Borderlands 2. Uh, so uh, let's go for a little, let's go for a little wander. Take a look here. All right, so uh, one of the things that you can do here as well is you have a uh, quick menu, and that lets you uh, do all of your uh, social interactions in that there are ways to interact with, the, uh, with your other players. So you don't have to specifically be talking. You can just uh, make, one, make one of these their gestures. Like this one's, uh, yeah, give it up. Clap, clap, clap. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fun way to be able to see what your character actually looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's right, emotes. Fuck, I, I don't know what the fuck they're called. Uh, but yeah, that was like a big Fortnite thing, too. Uh, you can duel. So what you Let's do is you... Let's have a nice clean fight. Uh, ah, I'm oh. just kidding. Dirtier the better. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. So Zane is like super fucking Irish, and it's really fun. He's been a really, really fun character to play with. Your characters actually have a lot of dialogue and interaction. For nearly everything that happens, your character is involved with the actual conversation. And so that makes it really immersive and fun. Because, uh, you know, in the Borderlands 2, uh, at least before, like, the Tiny Tina DLC, uh, the characters don't say anything. So everyone kind of just talks to them. Okay, thank you. And, uh, you know, you never reply. Uh, but they did it a lot in the pre-sequel. They actually have your characters do get to interact. It's it's not quite as much, uh, but in this one, they're really, your character's a really big player in this game as well. Uh, let's see, you can also ping. Hey, over here. So you can uh, ping stuff. This was something that uh, I saw that you did in Apex. Spotted a chest. Some of the chests look like this now. Uh, fantastic bit that has been changed for this game is uh, as far as bulk collecting out of stuff, in the first Borderlands game, you had to individually pick up everything you found. In the second Borderlands, if you walked over ammo or health or anything, it auto-collected. But if you went to a box, you'd have to bulk collect. In this one, you don't have to pick up anything. If you walk by it, it will automatically, all the ammo and health will automatically go to you, even out of a box. So if you open a box, psh, you get all the ammo out of it. It makes it really easy because you can just open box, open box, open box, and keep fighting. And you can just kind of stock your ammo behind you. Uh, yeah, so it, and we don't really use the emote stuff because Cindy and I sit side by side to play. <coughs> um, let's see here. All right, yeah, uh, mechanics wise. We still jump, we still crouch, uh, but we have the ability to slide. And I can slide much faster now. So that's how I get everywhere. Uh, you can also climb. So let's find something to climb. Yep. Bam. Yeah. Makes it easy to get up to places. And you slam. So that's pretty rad. Uh, the vending machines uh, have been updated as well. Uh, every time they make a new game, they, they get a little uh, uh, kind of design change. Uh, the uh, functional, Functionally speaking, though, they actually have uh, a lot more that they offer. When you look at a vending machine, it'll actually tell you what the item of the day is without you having to open the vending machine. So you can kind of walk by and say, uh, yeah, no, I'm not looking for that. Or, uh, no, I'm looking for a class mod and just, and just move on. Uh, also, whenever you open a vending machine, it actually physically opens the vending machine for you to for you to circle around through it like it's an actual like all the guns are physically here, so it does feel really fun to go through. Uh, I still have the ability to sell for 
for example. I don't want that. That's high. Uh, I don't need that. Don't want that guy. Sell, sell, sell. Uh, I've died a lot. <laughs> and uh, it has cost me a pretty penny. Plus, you have to spend cash to buy all the storage deck upgrades. So if you want to hold more ammo, you gotta you gotta buy it. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit of the inconveniences. Uh, it and it's not even like they were necessarily inconveniences because they weren't so inconvenient. But because of how they did this now, it's really kind of streamlined everything. Uh, it, it, it makes it so that you spend less time doing menial shit. Uh, you know, when you're playing with three other people, you can kind of just move move along. Uh, same thing with the uh, with the cars here. Uh, you can see I can use it, which lets me pull out one of three vehicle loadouts. Uh, they're very customizable. You can change, you know, what kind of car it is. They have the Bandit Technical still, and now they have the Cyclone, which is like a little uh, speed. It's it's quick and it's maneuverable, uh, but it's weak. So. Uh, it, but it is it is pretty fun to use too, and then you can change standard paint jobs, and you can also change the individual colors. Uh, you can also do this for your character. So when you change your uh, character skin, you can use the default skin and then change its its color scheme, uh, which made it really fun because as soon as you got the ability to which when you start the game. The first thing you do is talk with Claptrap, and he gives you your echo, and he says, register at this uh, quick change station. And when you get there, you can change your colors and kind of customize right out the gate. So that's pretty fun. Uh, different driver weapon and turret weapon. You can equip armor, different wheel types. Uh, these wheels are, uh, they're called like shredder wheels or something. What are they called? Zip wheels. Uh, they're, they when you use the e-brake it kind of generates energy and when you let go it boosts it's kind of like uh, drifting in mario kart and then uh, different engine types uh, this engine sacrifices having a lot of boost but it gives you little like electric laser wings that pop out that you know cut people down as you drive uh, so you can come in and deploy it or as you just walk up oh i'd have to deploy one first Oh yeah. You have the ability to just respawn the vehicle from here. That puts you right inside. So you don't have to open up the the uh, quick change or the catch a ride. You just walk up, deploy it, and go. This game's all about getting the fuck around. Uh, they were like, you know what? Too much time was spent trying to get from point A to point B. So they made it to where you can do whatever the fuck you want. Just like go, just fucking go. We know, whatever. Uh, like I said, you can fast travel without being at a fast travel station. You just go to your map, you pull back to uh, your planet map and then the galaxy map. Uh, you say like, I wanna go to Promethea and I wanna go to the Meridian Metroplex and I wanna go to this fast travel station. And you can just fast travel right here without having to do anything else. Just right wherever the fuck you are. They were like, no, don't, don't worry about finding a fast travel station. You, you get to the end of a level, you don't have to come all the way back to the beginning. You just fucking gone, leave. Uh, the other thing they did too is you can fast travel. Uh, you see here the fast travel stations you can cycle through. This one's the actual fast travel station, but this one's the outrunner. So wherever your car is, you can fast travel to it and it puts you right inside it. So once you get over here, pull up your map and say, I want to go to the front part of the map. And it just moves you around. So when you're in these big areas that have multiple uh, fast travel stations, you can just jump from one to the other without having to worry about changing any of the game. You're never leaving the map. Uh, see the car is still here. Fast travel to it gone and gone get the fuck out of here uh oh uh, speaking of inconveniences and one thing that is always inconvenient we'll uh get back to, to the vending machines here because the vending machines have one more really cool addition 
and that's with uh, the ammo dump. When you walk up to it, you can see I have X to shop and Y to refill ammo. So I can walk up here and say, oh, this is going to cost me $500 to buy all bullets, grenades, everything you're missing. Nobody does Boom. Everything is full. Uh, so you don't have to actually go in and buy, 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 buy. You just walk up and say, refill my ammo. Don't even have to open the fucking vending machine. Uh, it also tells you how much it's going to cost you because we have amassed quite a bit of storage for, you know, with all the SDUs. And uh, occasionally you'll walk by and say, God, that was a big fight. How much ammo do I need? And it says like $4,500. Like, mm, yeah, I'll go up in some boxes. <laughs> So let's see. Uh, within the, uh, the the map, you have challenges, and also it, it's grayed out, so I can't select it. But you have friends nearby, and the friends nearby bit shows you uh, socially if you have anyone who's playing the game that's one of your uh, friends in Xbox, it'll show you where they are if they're near you. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that that's exactly it. Is any time that you're uh, that you could be spent trying to find something or trying to get someplace just so you can move from point a to point b it's like they want to keep you in the action as much as possible with this game uh, so everything's been kind of based around that it's what are you doing well you're standing in looking at a menu trying to find something we'll, we'll just make it quick here this we know this is what you're looking for we've heard you bitch about it for the last five years <laughs> seven years it's been it's been a long time yeah seven years since borderlands 2 um so uh, the challenges uh, are all uh, unique to the, the area map. Uh, they're all kind of themed, so you have the same challenges that will happen in, the same, in, in different areas. Uh, one of them is this Crimson Radio. Uh, it, all throughout the map, uh, there will be uh, one or two little radio towers that are spewing propaganda for the, the uh, Children of the Vault, and Moxie's paying you to go up and hijack them and make them crimson radio <clears throat> so those are challenges you'll go around and find them uh the dead claptrap this has been something that's been <laughs> really fun actually is uh claptrap has found like when you're going through the levels you find dead claptraps around and he realized that he could take parts from the dead claptraps to build the new claptrap and uh so he's building himself a girlfriend and you're finding parts for her and it's been pretty funny it's a it, it's a good little shtick we'll uh we'll bip up the sanctuary in a bit and check it out uh the hijack targets these are uh, cars and vehicles that are stashed around in the different areas and when you find them ellie has you hijack them so you just go in and you know break in and take them and then you put them in a catch ride and all of them will have a unique feature to them and when you bring it to the catcher ride it unlocks that feature into the digistruct system so uh the special wheels the the laser wings those were on a vehicle and you had to find it grab it and then you pull it in so that's how you unlock the different kind of components to the cars <clears throat> um let's see what else here the legendary hunt this is something that hammerlock is having you do because he's the hunter and you had the whole Hammerlock's big game hunt thing that you did for the DLC in Borderlands 2. So he has you do the legendary hunt, and what that is is it'll be uh, some creature that, that is out there that's, you know, basically like a super badass. And uh, you just go kill it, and it has a fun little story about it, and, it, and then he gives you a reward, which we'll go over in a sec too because the reward system has changed drastically. Uh, and then the Typhon logs, uh, those are from... The, uh, the first Vault Hunter, Typhon de Leon. And when you find all three, uh, it unlocks a dead drop, which is a weapon cache that has a uh, high chance for, for rare loot. Blues, purples, occasionally a legendary in there. We found one or two. So that's always something we want to find is you find those, those Typhon logs, you get a little fun bit of story with them, and then you also get to uh, unlock guns, which is great. Everyone loves guns. Uh, so saying about the... Uh, as you can see the menu here, you have social here. The social menu is, is specific, is new to this game. Uh, but what it's doing is, it's all about all of your friends. So these are all of my friends. Hey, look, it's Smitty. 
There's this guy right here. Yep, check your map. Uh, so all of your friends will show up. It'll tell you if they're online. It'll tell you if they're playing. And uh, it has this really neat feature with, with just the roster here with your friends uh, that you can edit your status right here down on the bottom. And when you edit your status, you can say, I'm doing story missions, or I'm trying to do side missions, or here's a, uh, oh, look, I'm farming loot. So you pop this up as your status. So when I'm going through and I'm looking at all my friends that are playing, I'm like, ah, I know, I'm feeling like playing with someone real quick. Look down here. Oh, okay. This guy's actually going through and playing the story mission. Well, he's farther ahead than me. I don't want to play a story mission. So I'm going to go down to this one. Uh, th this person is just trying to farm. So I'll go farm with them for a bit. So you can actually see what your friends are doing before, you know, jumping in. And you can join their game straight away. Uh, so that's cool. It also shows you off to the side. You can see his uh, character above mine. Uh, this is my brother, by the way. Uh, it'll tell you where his skill trees are, as well as how many actual perks he has bought within that skill tree. It's a little quick way to compare, like, okay, you and I are fighting in the same style, in the same tree. Uh, you also have matchmaking. Uh, so this is, instead of just kind of looking for a game, you can specifically say, I'm trying to find people who are in the campaign. You can do circles of slaughter uh, individually. And so you can jump into a matchmaking here, and that'll take you into a lobby where you'll find other you know people and jump into a party uh, playing a circle of slaughter or proving grounds which is a new thing which is just like a, it's like a circle of slaughter it just is uh it's it's like a they, they do it like a dungeon crawl you start at the beginning you work your way through until you get to the end and there's a boss fight so uh haven't done any of these i don't really care for playing online you know they have people Uh, and then, and we're back. Lost there for a bit. Oh, <laughs> okay. So this is something I I just realized happened here. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So so this is uh, here. I was actually just looking for it too. I was like, my, my shit just kept cutting out. Like what the hell is happening? So in the top here, you can see this says mail. And then this says roster, and this one says matchmaking. The one between this and the mail, that S, that's your shift menu, the shift codes. So that's where you'll put in your shift codes, so you don't have to do it from the main menu. You can put them in right there uh, and redeem your shift codes there. Whenever I move, I'm broadcasting right now, but whenever I move onto the shift code screen, it pauses my broadcast so that I'm not showing you codes or anything that i got from it so that's uh that's that's really fun that's really funny uh uh netflix netflix and hulu and amazon video you can't take a screenshot on your phone when you're watching them if you try and just like screenshot what you're watching it's all protected and so when you screenshot it it actually just turns out as a black image so this is the same way uh the mail this is uh, a new system where this is where you actually get all of your quest rewards from the uh, the challenges. Uh, and also, whenever you have, let's see here. Yeah, this one. Uh, whenever you reach like certain levels of like I, this, you kill 100 enemies, the gun manufacturer for the gun type you killed with, like TDR here, they'll send you a loyalty thing, a reward. And so you can just take it and you equip it from here. And when you accept it, it puts it in your inventory. Uh, so when you unlock DLC and stuff like that, it all comes here. Uh, zero. Oh, that's right. So you do run into zero again. Uh, a couple of the uh, Borderlands 2 characters are in this game as well. Uh, so you do actually run into zero. And then you start doing like bounty hunter missions for him where you're finding high profile targets. And they all have like a shtick to them. Uh, like the first one we ended up finding was 
uh, someone who called herself Handsome Jackie. And she was like a Handsome Jack impersonator wannabe. And so he killed her. And then he had a little funny haiku to say about that. Because he still talks in, in haiku completely, which has been just fun. Um, so whenever you do one of these, you get a quest reward. And when you get the – it's a challenge reward. So when you get these challenge rewards, you you accept them from the mail. Uh, so that's how you actually get anything. You can also send mail in that I can select guns. Uh, you have to forgive me. I'm kind of just figuring this out as I go too. Uh, it looks like I can actually take guns out of my inventory in my backpack and send them to my friends. So I could say, oh, you know, I'm not using this gun anymore, but I think Cindy could. So I could take it and, like, we'll, uh, we'll get rid of this gun. Are you sure you want to send this item? Sent mail cannot be returned. Booyah. So now when Cindy goes into... Oh, I got an achievement for it, too. <laughs> Gun pals. <laughs> for sending an item to a friend, I got an achievement. Uh, so now when she goes into her backpack and checks her mail, uh, that will be there, and it'll say it's a gift from me. So that's really cool. You can uh, You can flip loot to your friends without having to get into their game and drop it or trade it with them. That's really handy. Uh, so yeah, let's. Uh, right now, I'm trying to find in this area. This is one of the first areas of the map uh, of the game, so this is all really low level. Uh, I'm trying not to level up any higher without Cindy. So for now, I figured I would just do some really low level shit on the side, uh, just so you could see what the gameplay kind of is like. Uh, but all of this gray area is all unexplored. Uh, these are all uh, uh, challenges I haven't done yet. So I think I'm going to do one of these. You know, <laughs> so I have the little uh, the broadcast bar that has the chat on it. And the bar is solid. I can't see through it. And it's right on top of this. So I can't see if I actually completed this legendary hunt or not. However, if I look on the map, uh, I don't see it. So when you do complete it, uh, it does pop up. For example, this one up here says Dead Claptrap. This was a Claptrap part, and this is where we found it. Here, it's got the little logo, and it's got a check mark, so you know it's there. Uh, there, It's really handy because when you get close to one of these, it actually appears on your map. So you have to get right within the area, but then it says, yeah, you're here, and it tags it so that you can come back to it later. So I just gotta find uh, one of these. We'll do uh, we'll do the hijack. I can't equip it, but I gotta I just gotta go find it. I kind of know for a fact it's right here. But uh, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, let's get in the car. This is my laser wings. This is my drift. That airborne abomination is known as a scrap. Correct nature's mistake and kill it for me. Well, let's bend it. Uh, one of the fun things about the cars now is uh, you can actually flip them and they roll around and so like if you get enough air and you land, you just kind of like bounce like a fucking toy. And then if you land upside down, you're forced out of it, and you can flip it like in Halo. Try to get out of here. Uh, anytime that one of these pops up, that means you can uh, climb up it. So this is going to be the legendary hunt area. You can see in the mini-map now, it's actually been tagged right here. Yeah, so I got close enough to it that it flagged it, and now I can do it. Uh, this is defeating the legendary Scrack. It's probably going to be super easy because it's a low level. In fact, this guy is... Oh, no! Everyone's leveled to me. Yeah, shit. I take that back. He's going to be... Uh... Well, he's going to be fucking me up here. Oh, fuck. All right, time to figure out about the guns. This is an Atlas gun, so... Tag him. Now, no matter where my shoot, I'm always hitting him. Which means I don't have to focus. I can just. Alright, 
and that's run out, so we gotta tag him again. But yeah. Hey, it's me. And he swap places. And I could detonate him. So that was one of the action skill augments for the clone, is that uh, you can end it early. And when you do, it acts like a giant bomb and it does a fuck ton of damage. Uh, one of the other cool action skills, not to get you know completely off topic here, but... Uh, for the clone down here, this one's called the old you instead of the new you. It's the old you, and uh, it has been really handy and it's really especially good when you're on your own. Uh, if your clone's out and you go in a fight for your life, you can just end it. He goes away and you revive, and so that's a really good way to just kind of get right back to it. Uh, but speaking of revives, one thing that has been bonkers is. <laughs> NPCs will revive you. If you're fighting around allies, no matter who they are, they will revive you. So if you're fighting with Maya or Brick or Lilith, if you're fighting with one of those people around you and you go down and you're fighting for your life, they'll run over and help you out and bring you back and give you your second wind. Uh, but it's not just it's not just the uh, main characters. It's any NPC who's in combat with you. So we first kind of found this out in uh, Promethea. We were, you know, in the in the, the the kind of metropolitan area, and we were fighting with all the Atlas troops against the Malawan troops. And uh, Cindy's downed, and I was like, I'm on the other side. I can't fucking come get to you. I'm like already fighting myself. And she goes, Wait, I'm being revived. And we look over, and one of the little atlas soldiers just like stopped and started picking her up oh shit and i uh, started giving her a second win <laughs> and so right as soon as he did she made a she made a a joke from uh i think it was infinity war uh where uh when wong saves all of them from uh from korg in the very beginning of the movie and uh Tony Stark just says, Wong, you're invited to my funeral, or you're invited to my wedding, and then just takes off. <laughs> Cindy said that right as, a, right as it happened. She was like, uh, someone's revived me. Oh, shit. Hey, Wong, you're invited to my wedding, and then ran off to go fight. <laughs> so this one's really handy that way, too, though. Uh, so that's good. That was, that was a decent fight. So now, uh, ooh, drop good guns. It's worth money. I need the money. Uh, this one's got a grenade launcher under the bottom, but it does very little damage. A lot of loot you find. Uh, it's kind of like an abundance of really cheap shit, though. That kind of doesn't do much. Alright, off to find our hijacking turn. Am I off in this enough? Yeah! Broke free. Uh, another really cool feature about this game now is uh, something that is kind of common for a lot of games now and has been for a while, but this was right before that kind of came about, and it's uh, the idea of destructible uh, environments. So if you're running around, you can actually, like here, all the trees and stuff, you can break through them. Uh, Cover is uh, vulnerable too, so if you're hiding behind like a little concrete barricade, uh, it can start just getting torn apart and then you're not behind cover anymore. Uh, you can also now uh, interact with the, uh, the barrels as well. So here we'll... Uh, Boom! Hell yeah! <laughs> Yeah. Wait for it. Whew, that's a beefy hunk of vehicle right there. Go on and grab it for me. Let me aim at 
He's singing songs about that one. And see. Oh yeah. This is that uh that gun that doesn't have to reload. Doesn't use ammo. Does a decent amount of damage. Just never stop shooting. Alright, so uh so here's the hijacking target. And this is heavy outrunner. So whenever you find any of these uh, hijacking targets or the radio stations or the dead clap traps, you usually have to like kind of do a little thing to get them. It's not just like, oh, you found it and it's out. The clap traps kind of can tend to be that way. Uh, and the Typhon logs too, but the radio stations for sure. And uh, the hijacking targets, you have to do a thing to get them. So found it, easy enough. Uh, but the door's shut. I can't get to it. So you got to figure out how to open the door. Track in, track in. Climb up here. Bullets are good. Uh, and then, oh, button. Yep, that's done it. Now drive it back to the kitch ride so I can scan it. Oh, god damn it. Got the turret. <laughs> Excuse me, other little piece of shit car. This one's super beefy. It's got the armor. Sweet outrunner armor you just nabbed. Give it a try next time you catch a ride. I think I will. Heavy armor. Booyah. Oh yeah. So it uh, turns out everyone here is still leveled, so I gotta go fuck off somewhere else. Let's see. Oh well, uh, Twig. Uh, oh no, I can't. I can't go to Sanctuary yet because that's where my our next main quest is, and I don't want to. I can't do that without Cindy. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's try in here. There's two fast travel spots. Let's go, let's go here. This is kind of one of the first areas you get to. It's, uh, it's big. Hey, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, just doing a bit of a, a kind of playthrough. Hey, sweet. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, as I was just, uh, telling everyone else is, uh, for those of you just joining, uh, my wife and I are playing the, the main story together. And we're, what I'm assuming is about 90% through the story right now. So, uh, this is my main. I'm using it to, to show how kind of the skills work and the skill trees. Uh, and the different gun types, but I don't want to move any farther through the story, and I don't want to level up any without her. So I'm trying to find areas that I can do, uh, I can fuck off in without uh, getting any XP for it. Uh, should be enough shit around here to do that's not gonna get me XP. I thought that other area would be fine, but uh, it, it turns out it's like the dust was in Borderlands 2 where it kind of levels along with you. Hopefully this area is like the southern shelf. And then I can just kind of... Yeah! Let's see. I'm going to use my Atlas gun because I like that smart bullet technology. Yeah! Level 2. Alright. So I'm not going to get any XP for this. Take that, you uh, so... First thing we've got for Zane is Clone! He's a bit of a bastard. I can swap places with him. Uh, throw that barrel around. Swap places. Every time I swap places with him, uh, he does Nova. I 
can also end him early. For a big bomb. And that has a, quite a big radius, too. Uh, my other, uh, because with Zane, I can have two action skills rather than uh, having grenades. So I sacrifice grenades, and now I get my clone. Or my drone. My drone and my clone. So the, the, clo the drone, god, it's going to be a mouthful. Uh, flies around, attacks people, and uh, fucks them up. Right now, uh, I've got the drone has cryo bullets and also drops grenades occasionally. Let's see if it's that. <laughs> Alright, well, I can't really demonstrate the, the, the tracker because the tracker is strong enough to just kill everyone. But uh, uh, I showed earlier. Uh, Alright, Smitty, check you later. Uh, how the fuck it's just blowing everyone up here. Uh, the Atlas guns have uh, darts and uh, some sort of tracker. And when you tag something with it, uh, which I can't do without killing anyone, but uh, it, all of your bullets automatically track to them. So those are the little bits with uh, Zane. Uh, I'm going to right now bip out and load... Uh, my secondary character because I like I said I was playing with my wife and we, we don't want to level up away from each other which kind of it's like a watching ahead of a series that you guys are both binging you don't want to ever do that that's not that's not great uh you know it's not fun I'm, I'm doing this with her so whenever we stop playing and she's like ah you know she's gonna write she's gonna go do other stuff uh I still want to keep playing so she was like well why don't you just make a new character I was like oh Fuck, why don't I make a new character? So I made a couple new characters. Uh, I started with Zane, and then we made it to a certain point, and so I jumped out and started uh, building a Beastmaster. So I had Flack. And uh, then at a certain point, like I started catching up again, and so I started back up and started Siren with Amara. So Flack has been really fun. In fact, he's, he's one that... Uh, they're a, they're a really fun character. So we'll jump in and say where we're going here. <clears throat> uh, I'm about near halfway through the story by my estimate uh, for, for uh, Flack right now. Um, let's see. I made it to Eden Six, so I'm on the the, the third planet. Uh, he's been a lot of fun, and it's and it's this little guy right here who comes with the name Mr. Chew. Uh, you can pet him. He does tricks. He's fucking amazing. Uh, the pet also fights with you. Uh, one thing that when uh, the game was being announced, and I was kind of reading about the characters, uh, Flack was. Oh yeah, and he horks up ammo occasionally. <laughs> uh, sometimes guns too, you know, like a skag do. Uh, we kind of knew that the pet was going to be uh, a big part of Flack, and that you would get to command animals, uh, but it wasn't really clear how that would work. So I was under the impression it was going to be like one of your action skills, was that you would be able to summon an animal. But the way that Flack's act, uh, skill tree looks, we'll come to it right now, is uh is a little bit different so off on the side here down to the right where it has the action skills listed uh you have the hexagons are action skills and then the chevrons one of these uh these are uh action skill augments but for flak you also have the diamond which is your pet and that's not something that you summon your pet is with you the entire time so they always fight with you. Uh, he finds loot for you. Uh, it's it's really fun, and uh, so it's something that I thought was going to be, you know, a skill that you'd use. That pet stays with you the whole time. So when you're playing solo, Flack is a really good character because you always have someone fighting with you. You're always you're fighting with an extra set of hands without having the difficulty raised by having another player. Uh, yeah, I still haven't unlocked any of the Guardian rank stuff. Uh, so you can have a Skag. 
You can have a spider ant, which is really fun. And you can have one of the new animals. It's called a jabber. And they're basically like monkeys that uh, have like a hand on their tail so they can use stuff. Uh, <laughs> this one has a gun. <laughs> so your pet runs around and he's got a gun. And he's got sunglasses on. He's super rad. Uh, but I've been working with the Skag. He's been the best so far. So it starts with that, uh, and then you can equip a new pet slot. And this one is actually just its changing how your Skag uh, looks and acts and the different buffs it gives you. So originally, uh, you get some damage increase by having the pet. Uh, this one changes it to gun damage as well. And uh, he does a different attack where he kind of throws people in the air now. Uh, and then... This one uh, increases your fire rate and also acts as a singularity when you give an attack command. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a little, uh, it's a little kind of like whatever. And uh, I kind of wanted the gun damage and also thought that the great horn skag looked a little cooler. So we kept up. Uh, so you get a pet, but you also have your action skill, your actual action skill. Uh, so this first action skill is called Gamma Burst. Uh, this is the only one for Flak I've used yet. I haven't leveled up enough to get another one, and this is kind of the one I started with. Uh, but the uh, the Gamma Burst sub, uh, creates like a little rift, and when you create a rift, your pet travels through it, and they turn into like a super badass. Uh, the uh, They also deal radiation damage, and uh, they, uh, you know it's a huge explosion when they come out. Uh, then you can do different, uh, I think, yeah, this one uh, changes that rift stays open, and now you get health regeneration when you or your allies stand near it. And it's a, it's a crazy amount of health regen. I think it's like, what it says, 40% per second. It, it's just like constantly. So if you're standing right there, you almost can't die because as soon as you take all that damage, your health is almost already back. Just seconds, and you're, you're full health, so... That's been really handy. Uh, you can also use the Gamma Burst while your pet is down, and it will revive them when it activates, but it doubles the cooldown time from 30 seconds to a minute. Kind of like, meh. Uh, this action skill is a Rack Attack, where you summon down some racks that swoop in. I think there's three uh, that come in, and you can shoot them a couple times, and they you know, do a little fight for you or whatever. Uh, and then this one is called Fade Away. This one's a little more about the hunter aspect of the Beastmaster. And it's that you turn invisible, you cloak, and you can fire uh, one shot, uh, three shots, right? So three shots while you're cloaked that are guaranteed no matter where they hit to be a critical. And uh, so that's a good way to, this tree is all about stacking criticals. It's a little like zero sniper tree in Borderlands 2. Uh, so yeah, I've been working with this Gamma Burst one with the Skag, and so far it's been really handy and really fun. So there's my boy. Uh, now that we're on Sanctuary and I'm not moving Zane's quest for it, uh, I can show a little about uh, Sanctuary and how it looks. So this is Sanctuary 3, officially. Uh, it's a ship out in space. You can see out here. The vast nothingness of space. The inky black void. Uh, on the ship, uh, there's a lot of different areas. Uh, in here, these are your rooms. And so on your rooms, you have your own bank, your vault that you have. Your vault actually contains uh, all, all of these weapons. These are anything I put in here from any character. So in Borderlands 2, you had... Uh, Claptrap's locker, and then you had the bank, or the vault. You had the bank. So when you had the bank, that was items you can just hold there. Uh, but when you had the vault, you had four slots, and you can put items in there, and any character you have had access to those four items. Uh, the bank in Borderlands 3 acts the same way as the bank and Claptrap's locker combined, in that you have all of the space. Right now I have 35 available slots. And uh, and all of these are available for any of my characters. So if I came up here with Zane, I would see the same list of equipment. 
it's really good because I was able to jump in here with uh, Amara and go, hey, I can do with a little bit of a better shield and a little bit of a better gun. Just swipe them back for myself. That's really handy to be able to do without having to find the locker and uh, only having four items because, uh, you know, you'd have a bit of a good build and you'd like, oh, I want to, you know, you know, sneak some of these guns to my other characters. You can only do it four at a time, so you'd have to load in, drop four into the bank or into the vault, log out, log in with your new character, go in, collect those four items out of the locker, and then do it all over again. So now they're like, eh. I was discussing earlier about how a lot of the changes made to Borderlands 3 were about reducing any sort of menu time or downtime you have uh, outside of actually playing the game. You kind of have this vibe of, yeah, we get it. You're going to do this shit anyway. Just, just do it. Here's a quick button to do it. Here's a quick button to buy all the ammo you need without having to open up the fucking vending machine. Uh, here's You can fast travel to any place in the galaxy without having to be at a fast travel station because we, we know you just want to get to point A to point B. Oh, hi, baby cat. <laughs> Interrupted me. Uh, so the bank is really awesome in that way. Uh, also, you get to customize your room a little bit, hang up some signs. And then on the other wall, you get to display guns. This is a little bit of Skyrim trick uh, that was pretty awesome. Classy. Uh, where you could take a weapon and put it on a weapon rack in the house that you built. And uh, that way, it could be like, oh, I had a really cool weapon. But it was when I was a really low level, and it doesn't do shit. Uh, but, I, you know, I love the way it looked, and it was kind of like a reward that I won from something, so I'm going to put it up. Uh, so you can do that here. You can see everything here. Uh, I have only put legendaries up here. Uh, you can, from here, inspect them right away. See their weapon card. Check out the weapons themselves. Very awesome. Cool gun. Uh, and then you can put weapons here yourselves as well. Uh, since they're mine, I can take them down and use them. A neat feature about the way Sanctuary is laid out here is I have a room and this is great and it's cool but if I have more people playing with me they all get their own rooms too and that's what these other three areas are they're all locked right now because I don't have anyone in with me but if I had more people playing everyone gets their own room and their own room is the same for everyone so if I join someone else's game I would have a room on their sanctuary with my guns in it and my locker. It's so cool. Let's see here. Down in the cargo bay. This is where Ellie's stuff is. This is the drop pod is out this way. That's how you get to the new planets. Uh, this is a way for you to see what your car is going to look like. So you can deploy it and check it out. You can't get in it, you can't use anything in it, but uh, it's a good way to check it out and kind of put it up as a little bit of a prop. Uh, you also have these little red guys here that are highlighted. These are different uh, car components that you unlock during uh, doing little hijack challenges. Uh, for example, up here on the wall, this is the armor. The heavy armor so it's got the little description and where you found it and uh then it lays up here any of the ones that are red have not been found yet and it'll tell you this is what it is and this is where you get it and, well, i don't know where this one is i haven't been there yet uh, let's see this was the the laser wings this was the heavy tire the wide wheel um Location, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't know where any of this shit is. What about you? Oh no, I know where you are, but I haven't been there. Alright, yeah. Uh, Ellie, how you doing? Hey there, sugar boots. What up? In here, we've got Claptrap and his girlfriend that we're helping build, Veronica. They're supposed to give you the human experience. I feel very sensitive to all stimuli. Happy! Wait! Losing hope! Sad now. Don't worry. If my experience is anything to go by, you'll only feel like that all of the time. 
Convenient. Oh, this is catch a ride to heaven. That's all the, the scooter memorial. Ellie's also got it as a tattoo on her shoulder, wherever she is. It's sad. I don't want to go look at it. Uh, in here, this is Zero, my homie. So he's working for Atlas with uh, with Reese from Tales from the Borderlands. Uh, over here, these are all of the targets for the uh, the uh, what do they call them? Legendary or like a most wanted thing? Uh, and then these are the ones that we've already killed. And then you can check them out. This one was Baron Noggin. And then it's uh, Zero's little description in in haiku, of course. See what else have we got up here. Go back up to the rooms. Oh yes, of course. Golden key chest. Uh, the animation on it is actually really fun. I don't have any golden keys. I would show you, but I can't. Maybe next time. Or find a shift code and get it. Uh, in here we've got Marcus. Selling guns, guns, guns. Vending machine. Uh, these are the SDUs now. You've got two choices. So you can select the SDU, which, you know, again, everything in this game you actually get to physically see now. Uh, and they cost money. Why everything got to cost money? It's a lot of money. That's less money. need to carry a lot of stuff. Carry more with an SDU. And by that. You can hold more items. And you buy that. Whatever. You gonna buy something else or not? Oh, and this one too is uh, Lost Loot. Excuse me. Lost Loot. Uh, there is a locker back this way in the room where everyone hangs out. Next to a quick chain station, of course. Right here, this is the Lost Loot Locker. Uh, whenever you are playing, if you happen to have a legendary drop or some other really significant loot and something was going on and you couldn't get to it, uh, let's say you were playing in someone else's game and it dropped over there and you're like, oh no, I'm going to get it, but he's already fast traveling and everything went and it happened too fast and you lost it. This will collect rare and legendary loot and store it in here so that you don't have to lose something that you just couldn't get. Or, for example, this has happened too, is you're trying to farm for a gun. You're farming, you're farming, you're farming, you're fighting this fucking boss, you're fighting this fucking boss. Uh, you know, uh, oh, I'm going to farm this one, uh, you know, heavy or, or badass, and he has a chance to drop the legendary pistol I've been waiting for, and you do, uh, and he explodes into his little loot bomb, and the loot flies up, and it lands on a roof, and you can't fucking get to it. I just did all that work, and that gun's right there, and I can't get to it. Now, if you leave and come back to Sanctuary, the gun will appear here in the chest. Uh, it has a finite amount of space, though. Uh, which, you know, I've yet to have an issue with this, but uh, I jumped into my brother's game one time and he had something in there, so apparently it is using, it is useful in some way. Continuing our tour of Sanctuary 3. We have Marcus and we have Moxie. There's Moxie's bar. Welcome in. So you got Moxie's bar. Hammerlock's got hey, a new bow, does he? Hope this one takes. Oh yeah, Hammerlock's got a new boyfriend. Win, Winfred, uh, Wainwright. That's it. He goes by Winnie, but it's Wainwright Jacobs of the Jacobs Corporation. Very that awesome. Goes a long way in my book. Bow show. Uh, you got vending machines still. Fantastic. They're all different now, so there's they do cool stuff. This one actually uses Iridium to play. Uh, I'll roll the dice. We'll see what we get. Shit. We got shit. I lost 10 Iridium for nothing. Uh, but Iridium is like finding almost like money. It's very common. So I had 900 Iridium and I, you know, not even through the game. Let's see. Oh yeah. So about Marcus. Yeah, I've taken a handful. 
Uh, Marcus is shooting range. It's no longer just a bandit strapped to a plank that you can shoot and test how much your guns do. It's an actual shooting range game. So when you come here, you can uh, read the rules. It'll tell you about how the firing range works. And then normal mode. From here, it actually pops up targets. And you get points for doing it. Uh, your score is shown up there. But uh, that's fun, except for you lose one really important functional thing that we liked about that was, I don't know how much damage this gun does. So I'm just be able to shoot it and say, oh, okay, that's what all my stats and bonuses do. Alas, it is whatever. Uh, oh, and then we're back here with uh, the garage. Zero, so we'll run back up here. Back out onto the main deck. Yo, word. Up here. And over on this side, we have the infirmary. It's got Tannis in it. She's the one stop standing by in this room. Uh, here's the Iridian Logical. artifact, the Iridian writing can't read it yet that's another end of the game kind of thing that happens hey bud we moving back down the ship here that had an echo log on anything uh, I believe it just stairs down Still trying to catch my bearings in some of these areas. Uh, not all of them are unlocked right now for me, so some of them are running into an end. But here we have Sir Hammerlock's little like lodge, his little uh, study kind of area that he has. It's very fantastic. These very big, tall chairs. I love them. They're so ridiculous. Uh, but this is where you get all the information for your legendary hunts. Uh, right here, this one is Phoenix, location unknown. But uh, right here, this is Lavender Crawley, and it was in the droughts. And uh, so whenever you fight one of the legendary hunts and you kill them, they get put up on one of these plaques. And the plaques will tell you uh, who you have to fight, the ones that have the little dot under them. These are uh, different hunts that you can have. So if you see one that's got a dot, that was uh, one of the hunts that we did. This one was Chonk Stop in Floodmore Basin. So uh, Hammerlock gets to hang out on the ship as well. And then up at the front, I believe this is the front of the ship. Yes. It's the command deck. It's the bridge. It's on the bridge here. Hey. It's Lilith. Looks like no me. one's safe from the COV. Something tells me that Tyrene Calypso knew about these vaults a long time before she found the map. I wonder how. Interesting. Uh, people hanging out up here. Let's put that box here. It's a beautiful view. In fact, they've got uh, a downstairs viewing area. I don't know what's in here yet. We haven't unlocked it. Uh, but this is a great view, and whenever you're traveling in different areas, uh, the ship will fly and you get a good view there. And this is that, you can actually fly to different areas. Even if you can fast travel anywhere, it's, you know, basically you're deciding where you want to park the ship. Some hell, Vault Hunter. You know it, homie. And then here we have Ava's room. She's a... Uh, one of the characters from there you are. Oh, hey, so Claptrap said you launched a prison break, huh? That's cool, I guess. She was uh, Maya's apprentice for Siren study, uh, and then you know other areas that are still locked. So that's our little tour around Sanctuary Three, and uh, it's also getting pretty late, so I'm gonna call it for tonight. 
Uh, thanks for sticking around, everyone, checking it out, watching the, the review. I will be doing this more often, uh, talking about the different types of skills and builds and stuff like that, and a little bit get a little more gameplay when I'm not uh, hiding and trying not to level up past my wife. So until next time, thanks a lot for joining me. I'm Ben Townie. Uh, be sure to follow me up. We'll catch you next time.